show and uh, Ted said, uh, look, I know this really, really good jazz saxophonist who could come along and do a term. Would you like to, would you like me to ask him to come and be part of the evening? And I said, that'd be great. And he was unavailable. So we got Derek instead. And... <laughs> oh. Oh. Nasty. No. Sorry, Derek. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> but Derek was fantastic. He did a wonderful set for us. And then at the end, he came back and was jamming on stage with Richard O'Brien from the Rocky Horror Show and various other people. Oh, is he nice? Richard O'Brien is lovely, but Derek's, oh, even, Derek's even nicer. Oh, that's why he's here tonight. And, uh, uh, and I've really, that was the last time I worked with Derek. So it's been 30 years. But. Uh, <laughs> We've sort of stayed in touch. Derek's gone on to much greater things. He's now with the Jules Holland Rhythm and Blues Orchestra. Wow. Um, hey. How did that come about, Derek? How did you get into working with Jules? Did you? It's a, it's a funny sort of thing because, um, like all these things, uh, it's, the, it's the most unexpected route. At first, literally, all I got was a phone call, said, I'm Jules Holland's manager. Would you like to audition for the band? <laughs> Um, but there are, when you think, of, when you go backwards, you find out there are reasons and causes why things like this happen. <clears throat> There's two things that happened. Um, one is I used to be in a band called the Bootleg Beatles. Oh, so right. I, yeah. I was sort of yeah. on, on the circuit. Playing sort of on the ship. Yeah. A lot. And uh, I used to use um, a very good girl saxophone player as a, as a deputy for me when I wasn't available, called Lisa Graham. Well, Lisa Graham was the lead alto in the Jules Band. So it was firstly she recommended me to management, having worked with me in the Bootleg Beatles. And then secondly, one of the trumpet players in the Jules Band is also somebody that I played with in a different band, a, a comedy band, actually, called Ronnie and the Rex. Um, kind of comedy rock and roll thing. So we played together. So again, he also had worked with me a lot and said he thought I'd be appropriate for the band. Um, so those two people, it's all, it's kind of like you say it's it's who you know, but it is who you know. It's who you've worked with. Yeah. People, nobody in this business ever looks for a musician and says, oh, I'll go to the Yellow Pages. I'll just book a saxophone. Play. It does not work like that. You have to have worked with all sorts of different people in a hundred different places. Sure. And <coughs> says... Oh, we need a new saxophone player. Who would that be? Now, the interesting thing was, at the time, just before I got the gig with Jules, I was working for BBC Television as a sound engineer. Right. Uh, the other string, the other side of my career. And what happened with that was, I was walking on pretty well the day I left the BBC. I walked through TC1, which is the big studio, and the Jules Holland Band were in there recording the Hootenanny TV show. <laughs> and I saw the sax section and a, a good friend of mine was in the band there's a guy called Pete Long and he'd been in it for five years and I said oh Pete good to see you again he'd come and work with me with my band Sax Appeal so again that's another personal contact and I said uh, how's it all going he said oh I've, I've resigned this is my last ever thing I said oh I could do this gig give me a shot so I jokingly <laughs> said give me a, give me the gig in um that was in December. They were recording the TV show in December. I also left the BBC that Christmas and to go as a freelance full-time professional musician. Um, and uh, basically, uh, six months later, I had the gig with Jules. Fantastic. So the three people that I'd met and worked with all individually recommended me to the management for the job. Um, so I did two auditions. They haven't told me whether I've got the gig yet or not. And that was 17 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. I'm sure. But if, if that's the way it works, if Jules desperately needs a Henry VIII lookalike, just tell him to give me a call. <laughs> you well, know where he goes. Well, <laughs> we play at Hampton Court. That's your gig, really. Isn't I'm it? there, mate. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring my recorder with me, and I'll be the front row recorder with you. <laughs> Derek, did you ever play at the Orchard Theatre with Mark Armand? One of his, because I saw Jules Holland at the Orchard in Dartford. Yes, yes, that'd be me, probably. Oh, and I saw you at the Albert Hall with, who was it? Who did Jules have on as his guest? Uh, Dave Edmonds. Dave Edmonds. Oh, gosh, yeah, that's going back a bit, Dave Edmonds. <laughs> I am quite old, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> believe you. <laughs> well, anyway, without any more ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's have our first number from, ladies and gentlemen, Derek Nash. Oh, right, okay. Hey. Didn't know what sort of stuff to play. Obviously, you say jazz, but I th let's stay on the let's stay on the gentle Friday night stuff at the moment. I'm going to do um, a Grover Washington Junior number, uh, which is on an album I did. Uh, I, I had a group called the Funk Experience, 
Um, I, I had lots of groups. Um, at the moment, none of them are working, but uh, we'll see that. So this is uh, a, a beautiful old uh, Bill Withers tune that Grover Washington Jr., who was one of my saxophone heroes, played on. Uh, so this is uh, uh, something called Just the Two of Us. Let's see if we can get this going. Nope. <laughs> Press some buttons. <laughs> Part of the audience, part of the sound.
Superb. Thank you, Derek. That's wonderful stuff. Brilliant. Oh, wonderful. Right. Great sound. Great sound. Welcome, Simon. <clears throat> so, De I mean, when did you first start? Hello. When did you first knew you had a talent for saxophone? When did that first become apparent to you? Well, it was it was more a question of uh, growing up with a father who was a professional musician already, who worked for a, a, a famous dance orchestra, but up in Manchester. They were called the, the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra. And they mm. were based in Manchester. And my father was the arranger for them. So um, every time it's half term, it's school break or anything like that, I used to go with him to the recording sessions for this 16-piece uh, big band. And it's kind of hanging around listening to that week after week when you're just a kid growing up. It, mm -hmm. becomes, it gets in your blood. Yeah. My dad was a piano player, so he played piano at home. And I had piano lessons when I was quite young, six or seven, I started there. And I started saxophone uh, when I was about 12 or 13, something like that. Decided. So you get the hang of it now. Yeah, just a <laughs> bit. <laughs> and what other instruments do you play? You obviously say you have piano lessons, you're obviously a saxophonist through and through, but... Uh... Yeah, what I decided to do, um, because I played saxophone first, there's, a, there's a, a sort of route officially. In the old days, you always learnt clarinet first and then saxophone second. But the fingering of a clarinet is different from a saxophone and slightly harder. So That's if you do saxophone first, going to clarinet, suddenly becomes quite an uphill struggle right. rather than graduating from clarinet and of course officially in the olden days you were expected to play clarinet so you could do all the glenn miller bands because they had clarinet lead and also if you want to work in the pit in the west end uh you've got to uh, you've got to play flute and clarinet and piccolo and all those kind of things because all the west end shows require doubling as it's known but uh, I was selfish. I just wanted to play saxophone and nothing else but saxophone. So I've stuck with that through and through. But what I do do is um, I play all the different sizes. So I've got baritone. This is tenor. Mm -hmm. so I've got alto, soprano, baritone, and quite often we'll take them all out on a gig. If it's, if it's my own band, then I'll take all the four different saxes. So you you don't go for the full Rodney Slater bass baritone then? Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And what what musical influences did you have yourself apart from your father? Is there any particular heroes of yours that you look up to and you like to play like? Well, uh, I mean, the early stuff it was it was a funny thing. I had a I had a sort of real mix of uh, Frank Sinatra, Count Basie, Duke Ellington from my dad's side. But then I was growing up as a teenager with bands like Genesis and Pink Floyd and yeah. kind of rock and, mm -hmm. and progressive rock bands. Uh, and then uh, I think what happens is I, I met in the middle, which was jazz funk. Right. So David Sanborn, Grover Washington Jr., the Brecker Brothers, all those kind of bands. Uh, so uh, CCS, um, oh, Chicago, all those kind of bands mm -hmm. suddenly were happening on the scene that were, had rock credentials, but playing mm -hmm. jazz music. And then yeah. Steely Dan, of course. Yeah. Uh, and that was it. I was sold down that line. But uh, I mean, I equally love playing the straight ahead, straight ahead stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember famous people um, like um, Sonny Stitt, who was actually he. I heard Sonny Stitt before I heard Charlie Parker. So I thought Charlie, oh. Charlie Parker was copying Sonny Stitt, I thought. <laughs> it's like all those things. It's just as a kid, if that's the way you greet it, then that's yeah. it. Hannibal yeah. Lattery, I love David Sanborn, Grover Washington. Um, oh, the guy from the Crusaders, Wilton Felder, just think he's amazing. Stanley Turrentine. So it's kind of possibly on the bluesier, solar side yeah. of jazz rather than, I mean, I, I, I love some John Coltrane, but sometimes it gets a bit way out even for me. Right. Um, and I'm a saxophone player. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And even I think, oh, come on, rein it in a bit. Yes. <laughs> Play a tune, for goodness sake. I paid some money. <laughs> um, it's funny, you know, you say about what you hear first is what you know. I remember a child at a school, I was doing a, a Henry VIII day at a school, and this child very solemnly telling me about his interest, that he, uh, he, he liked uh, Oasis, but he'd heard of this new band who were copying them called The Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> If it makes you feel any better, I can tell exact, almost the same kind of story, which is going to my dad and said, hey, there's this really fantastic new tune that's in the charts at the moment. It's called um, Misty, and it's by Ray Stevens. It's a country and western song. <laughs> Get me, yeah. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. Yeah. That was the first version I heard. I thought, oh, it's a great song. I really like this. And my dad and all his mates were laughing, thinking... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, Ray Stevens, it's his song. No, it isn't. No, it really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Really isn't, and then and then of course he had to take me next door and find Errol Garner's concert by the sea and play it for me. <laughs> then of course that's how the gates of heaven open because you just suddenly hear all this amazing versions of the stuff and off you go. Why not? Fantastic. Right, what do you got for us now? What's the next track? Um, I don't know whether to go jazzy or say soulful. So it's entirely up to you. My, my mother's just said soulful. As my mother's spoken, it's all right. Well, if she wants soulful, we'll stay soulful. So what I've got up here is i'm trying to know what key this is in um here we go so uh one of the things that i i've been involved in and really enjoying is um i put together a whole band to play the music of stevie wonder brilliant oh yes i've, I've seen all the adverts on your facebook page yes yeah the band is called some kinder wonderful um and see what you did there yeah yeah see that <laughs> so we're doing a whole theater show and sadly we had a 31 date tour planned for last year, all of which got cancelled. Oh. So if anybody wants four and a half thousand leaflets, uh, <laughs> um, I can give you lots of that. Uh, well, I mean, the other side's got a pretty sort of drawing of me and Noel on it. Anyway, I'm working with an amazing singer called Noel McCalla because you've got to have an amazing singer if you're going to do a, a, a night of Stevie Wonder music. Sure. But we 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 will we're not a tribute band. You know, he doesn't dress up and pretend to be blind and do all that business. <laughs> so we just we just you know it's a cel we call it a celebration of the music not a tribute but of course you can get on that tribute band circuit and play a lot of the the festivals and those kind of things mm. so it's been really good to us we got an album coming out well i don't know <laughs> when don't know whether i should bother put it out yet oh go on <laughs> i mean it's all done it's all ready to go it's just a question of sorting out when it's all going to happen um so that's what i've been working on in lockdown mixing this so this is one of those tracks and uh Oh, I'll tell the story that I tell on stage, which is about this, is when this was released, it's 1973, and when this song was released, no. Motown themselves said, oh, we don't like this song very much, we don't think it's very much, it's not very Stevie Wondery, because everything prior to this had been that kind of Motown backbeat, you know, junk and junk and junk and junk, and uptown, out of sight, all that kind of stuff. And this was a little more melancholic and soulful, and they said, hey, but... He's given us no new material. It's the only one left on the shelf. So we'll put it out as a single, but it's bound to fail. And it went like this.
Absolutely wonderful. Brilliant. And wonderful just the way you are, Derek. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, he's got go. Go for it, man. I'm there with you. <laughs> This oh, was, that was... um, I laid this all up. I did a I did a live stream of all sorts of various aspect musical aspects of my life um, about a month or so ago. Uh, so there's just a couple of hangover things in there still. I haven't got my technical operator with me this time. So <laughs> you're doing it wonderful. You're doing it wonderful. So what is the plan after lockdown does ever end? Are you, are you going to try and finish off the Stevie Wonder tour or back to Jules Holland or? Well, uh, Jules Holland is in theory scheduled for May. I have my doubts about whether we'll actually be allowed to go and play in May. <coughs> May, June, July for Jules. September and early October for some kind of wonderful. End of October, November, December for Jules. I mean, in theory, I've got 100 gigs in the book. But whether they actually happen or not... Yeah. Theory and reality are two completely different things at the moment, aren't they? Which is uh, and every jazz club I've worked at is closed. Everything I, d I mean, there's, there is no playing apart from live stream. I'm doing little sessions for people, so people are still recording music. I've been recording baritone saxophone all day today um, for somebody's big band project, and um, but no, there's there's nothing going on. I mean, I've got I'll be writing. In, I've been writing and arranging and composing and doing other stuff but i've uh, i've done th i've mixed three albums in the last nine months one some, some kind of wonderful album a completely different project which is the music of jerry mulligan um okay. the famous jerry mulligan chet baker pianoless quartet i recorded and i've been mixing all of that so that is <coughs> 1954 hague club los angeles cool west coast jazz very much on brushes so that's a completely different project and the third one, I've been working with a, a young lad from the uh, Royal Academy who's an amazing young saxophone player. So I've been mixing his music and he's been recording tracks and sending it to me. So I'm not bored. No, definitely not. I'm You're not to do. Uh, and then I just turn around and go walk in on the beach. As we can see. <laughs> As we can see. <laughs> well, I can, I can, well, this is my own photograph. It's uh, a very good one. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> I've become a bit of a sort of amateur photographer and I love getting I was in fact I was up at uh, 10 to 7 this morning to capture the sunrise this morning so good man I have to say I wasn't it would affect the tone of your instrument sorry <laughs> would it affect the tone of your instrument that's a rather personal question oh, the cold <laughs> oh the cold yeah well it goes out of tune if you put the cold on you see I uh, see so you've got to stay indoors for that you see yeah no if I'm but, just uh... But no, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us this evening. I mean, you're, you're, you're very welcome if you want to do another number. We won't press you because we know you're a busy man. Uh, let me see if I can find, if I've got a little one lurking somewhere, so to speak. Uh, one that would be appropriate. So all this other stuff, this is all original stuff at the moment. Here. A bit of jazz would be nice. A bit of jazz. See, right. my sister's demanding jazz, so you have to say yes. <laughs> I think I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Right. No, no, no. Okay, look, I'll, I'll play this one. This is um, So this is totally unique. I'll finish off with this one. Oh, bless you, Derek. Probably Very one of this tune. This is a, this is a co-composition uh, for myself and a fantastic guitarist called Dominic Ashworth. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominic is a guitarist, a Canadian-born guitarist. He's won the British Jazz Award for Best Guitarist of the Year in the past. And we have a, this is a totally different project. We have a Latin band called Picante that just plays sort of Brazilian music and all that kind of thing. Brazilians and sambas and all that. Kind of, and this is a tune uh, that um, we call Samba de Sol, so, so Sunshine Samba. Um, uh, so it's it's an original composition of mine, but it's it's going to get you dancing around on the beach with your cocktails out. And you <laughs> <Hey. laughs> Put the, umbrella, put the umbrella in your cut, cup of tea and all that kind of business. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I'll see if I can just make this one work. I've got to, I've got to remember to turn the headphones back up, otherwise I can't hear the backing track. <laughs> is, the, is the level all right to you lot out there, though? It sounds fun. Yes. It sounds really well, groovy. So this is Samba de Sol, and if you're enjoying this, um, it's actually, some of this is on Spotify, this album. So you're looking for a band called Picante. Picante on Spotify. We will look it up. Okay, here we go. The headphones turned off, so remember this time. Let's see if this is going to work.
Derek Now your advertising is so good, Derek, that my wife is sitting on a sofa over there and she's already looking up Picante on Spotify as we it. speak. <laughs> found it. Well, there we go. She's found well, it. She's bookmarked it. She's downloaded everything. Oh, great. Great. Good. Good. Well, you know, it's, uh, I suppose uh, in these times of musical trouble the only thing i can say is please go out and support lo music as you can on the internet absolutely well the thing is it's at a time like this you realize you can't go out and go and see live bands it makes you feel so much more that you want to go out and do something yes and it makes you miss it, so basically yeah. as soon as it's over we'll check out all your tour dates we'll come along on mass and uh yeah. oh, that'd be lovely that would be an evening for you <laughs> I, yeah if, if you just if if nothing else just have a quick look or uh, i've got a, f a facebook page um which you can check out uh my website is dericknash.com dericknash.com that's all it is and all the different bands you can see all the different outfits i play with and all the stuff we do and um, the stuff gets advertised up there so um yeah it would be absolutely lovely to see you out there on the other side we will be there and otherwise <laughs> deck chair attendant on frinton beach <laughs> <laughs> And you can now add to your CV as only the third ever live act to appear at the Whip It In virtual pub. I mean, yeah. oh, that's when I whip it out myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ted Heath beat you by two, but he never turned up tonight. I've just had a, I've just had a message from him saying, "I said, can't you sign in?" And he's replied, "Every time I press the effing button, I either get fish and chips ordered or I join ISIS." Oh. <laughs> Give him the best when you see him. Um, the story with Ted is that when I first came to London, I'd been a, a, a sort of full-time semi-pro in Manchester, and I moved to London, and I didn't have any work, which is what happens when you move to a completely different city. And Ted was the first person to give me a proper, um, a proper gig. He gave me. I joined his band for quite some time, 
and that's all because I had a I had a, a cousin and I I played and my cousin's bar mitzvah. There we go. Oh. Ted was the band at my cousin's for bar mitzvah, and they all said, "Oh, Derek plays saxophone." So I ended up playing a couple of numbers with him we'd never met before, and he was kind enough, kept in touch, and gave me loads of work. And, and I know Ted very well. In fact, I only saw him well, well the last Christmas I worked, whenever that was, a year and a half ago. <laughs> um, we I did a gig, local gig somewhere up the, down that way near him, and he turned up and he played there before, so it was lovely to see him. All right, well, look, he's an absolute gent. You're an absolute gent. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have another massive very round of applause for Derek Nash? Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get muddy. You'll get muddy. Don't do it. Ruin your saxophone. Take care, Derek. See you soon, Thank my friend. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, wasn't he nice? Wasn't he yeah. lovely? Well done, Michael. Good oh, book. Yeah. What an amazing... I Googled him. What an amazing career. The people mm -hmm. he's played with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Very, I'm lucky to know him and lucky to have him as a friend. So, uh, yeah. Oh, people singing, Michael. Sorry, darling? Where were the people singing on the music? Uh, well, there was. It was a backing track. It was pre-recorded under oh, the table. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was his wife and kids out the front. No, don't worry. It was the banana splits. Can see. we say hello to Simon yeah. Pauly? Doctor Pauly's here with us now. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry to um, come straight in with me with me dinner there and everything, but uh, it was either it was either that or not at all. So.